Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. <laughs> yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is off today. We got a special guest in the building. You know, every time he pulls up, uh, he's telling us something good. Michael Rubin is here. Yes. What's, What's up, happening, Michael? guys? Glad to be here. Now, he we, was just uh, waxing poetic about our Brooklyn Nets and how much he loves them. Yeah, that's what I was really saying. What we were really saying was that if you don't win the championship this year after uh, every draft pick and swap pick uh, going away, you're not going to be able to talk very much smack to me. So it's going to be a fun season. It's exciting. Yeah, I believe defense wins championships. And unless, unless the Nets develop some defense, I don't think they're going to win it all. I don't think they can make it through the playoffs playing the way they play. See, the problem is I like all, all – all, they're, they're big through. I love all three of those guys. So it's hard for me to actually really give them a hard time. But I happen to uh, believe in what you're saying and look forward to you prevailing and being able to give Angela a really hard time talking a lot of smack and shit to her. <laughs> yeah, conventionally, yes, you need the, but we'll see what happens. That's conventional thinking. Uh, but Michael Rubin, you have a big announcement for us. We do. We're really excited. We uh, Today we're announcing that Robert Rooks is uh, going to be the new CEO of the Reform Alliance. It's uh, really exciting for us. We're two years into this. We've had huge accomplishments so far. Van Jones, who started this with us, done an incredible job. He's moving to the co-chair of the Reform Action Fund. But Robert's going to take over. He was most recently the uh, CEO of the Alliance for Safety and Justice, uh, which has done incredible work in the space. And we're really excited to have him. And uh, this has been a uh, it's been a great start and journey so far, but we're just getting started. And we're uh, really, really pumped up about it. Why, why the change? You know, for us, you know, from the day we started this, really from, goes back to when Meek was in, in uh, prison, we talked about we had to do something really significant. We had to go out and, you know, change these probation for all laws that are keeping so many people stuck in the system. And, you know, from the start, we asked Van to come in and help start this and help build this. And he did everything we asked him to do. We've had some giant wins, which we should get into, big wins in California, Michigan. Um, but it was always the plan for him to start this and build this and then kind of um, go to the board position and also kind of be the co-chair of the uh, Reform Action Fund. So it's really exactly as we planned it. And for Robert, you know, this is a guy that has spent his entire life changing laws, doing this work, and is he, he, he's, he's as good as you get in this field. So it's kind of, you know, our, the same way we build a business, we just got to keep growing and pushing. You know, I want you to talk about some of those wins, Michael, because, you know, people see organizations like Reform Alliance and they ask questions like, well, what do they do? We always see these, you know, announcements. And it's like, oh, we're giving money here. We're doing it. What 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 has Reform Alliance done? What are some of those wins over the last few months? And Robert has also joined us now, guys. Just so oh, Robert's on? OK. I see him now. What's up, Robert? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Michael. Hey, team. How's it going? Good to be on. Yes, sir. I was just asking, Michael, what 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 are some of the wins the Reform Alliance has had over the past few months? Yes. So um, first, this is Robert and I's first interview together. I spent probably, I got to tell you, just we were so excited to make sure that we continue to push reform forward. I think we screened 300 people. I think I met, in, I met 30 people personally and probably spent about 20 or 30 hours with Robert before uh, the whole reform board came together, decided to make him our next CEO. So Robert, fun to have you do our first interview together. Of course, we want to be with you guys because you guys have been so passionate about this from uh, from the moment that it was envisioned in our head. But we have, to answer the question we asked Charlemagne, we've had some really big wins so far. First, in California, um, um, going into the holidays, they put in a one-year cap on misdemeanor probation and a, and a two-year cap on felony probation. That was really the most transformative probation laws really in the country. And as you guys know, the problem is so many people you know, four and a half million people on probation and parole in this country. And it's basically a trap door. It keeps you in the system and sort of put hard limits on how long you can be in the system. Like California did in a really big state was a breakthrough for us. I think we're going to bring the population down by 33% of people on probation and parole in California, of course, while keeping communities safe. So that was a giant win for us. And I think a lot of states looked and said like, holy shit, like this is like one or two year hard caps on probation uh, for misdemeanors and, and, and felonies, we should do so, something similar to that. And then Michigan came uh, right over uh, in, in the right over uh, the holidays. It was a great holiday gift for all of us. And they reduced um, how long you'd be on felony probation from five years to three years. So from the first time I came on your guys' show, we said we had a couple goals. Mm -hmm. We wanted to 
reduce and cap how long you could be on probation and parole for and not have what happened to Meek be able to happen to the everyday Meek where people were just on probation continuously. The second thing we wanted to do was limit how long you, you, you know, that you couldn't have these technical violations where you didn't break a law, but you ended back in prison. And um, that's what we've been focused on over the past two years. And having giant wins in California, Michigan is, um, you know, a big validation of our strategy. Word. Now, Robert, I know you're just joining us. Did you want to chime in on your new position in Reform Alliance and some of the strides that you plan to make? And I also want to talk about the new administration and what your thoughts are and, the, and if you feel hopeful and what you hope to get done. Well, thank you for the question and thank you for the space to be able to talk about uh, this important issue of probation and parole reform. I'm honored to lead reform into the next phase of growth. You know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Michael, for Van, and the founding partners of reform and their commitment to this issue of probation and parole. You know, I've been in this work in this field for over 20 years. I am a community organizer. I have been knocking on doors uh, for, for 24 years, talking to people about public safety. And I have been hearing on the ground that this issue of probation and parole reform was an issue, was a problem, was a trap for many people. And to have folks like Michael and the other founding board members come in and say, hey, this is gonna be a priority. This is gonna be something we're gonna focus on. We're gonna stay in our lane regarding how we're gonna end mass incarceration, but we're gonna elevate this issue to a really high level. It's truly an honor for me to come in and help guide the ship. In terms of what I hope to bring uh, into this space and into this, into reform is basically, you know, me being kind of a, a community organizer, uh, knowing uh, what people on the ground really think, uh, and also me being in positions where I've ran campaigns and won campaigns in states like California, Ohio, Michigan, Texas, Florida. Uh, our work in California, we've reduced uh, the prison population there by upwards of 30%. When I moved to California in 2012, uh, we had about 170 or so thousand people in our prison system. Today, we're right at 96,000. That's big change. That's big reform. And so reform is possible, impact is possible. And now I'm even more excited to join these titans in their own field, in their own respect, uh, to come together and and bring the form alliance to a whole new level. Now, Robert, you kind of look like Van with hair, just a little bit. Maybe maybe it's the Zoom, I don't know, but you kind of look like Van with hair, just a little tatty bit. Uh, now, now yeah. I, I want. I, 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 pre I appreciate that. You know, you know. I, 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 as I said, I've been. Bobby, you're way better looking than Van. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't I'll take, take that, Michael. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I want to ask. Hey, oh, go yeah. ahead, Robert. I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say, man. I, you know, Van is gonna go down as one of the great you know, thinkers uh, and communication minds of this generation, for sure. He's, he's a true genius. And so just coming in uh, to a space where he's built a highly competent team and, 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 and move in the organization from upstart to high performing, it, it's a true honor. So yeah, I'm, I look forward to continuing to work with Van. He's being elevated to the board, uh, as well as the team that he already has. So you know, that's all I want. You, you you spoke on it a little bit, Robert. But what what do you hope to specifically accomplish with with your new leadership role? So specifically, our goal is to move a million people off of probation and parole, and create real pathways to work, to wealth, and well being. This is critical. When we talk about how we're going to end mass incarceration, we're going to do it by changing laws to keep people from going in. We're gonna do it by strengthen, sh sh shrinking uh, the length people stay. And we're gonna do it by making sure people have real pathways when, when they come out so they can fully re-enter into society in ways that will help them succeed. We have to do it at all fronts. And so reform's role and, and what I'm going to uh, continue to work on based on what was already there uh, is to hone in on how people on probation and parole uh, are in this trap, are in this trap where uh, they have these stipulations that really are nearly impossible uh, to, to, to hold when, and also have a family and a job. And, and so we're gonna change how people on probation 
and parole are treated. We're going to stop the pipeline uh, that people on probation and parole are in because basically probation and parole today uh, is prison preparedness. Mm. Uh, and, 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 and we need to stop that pipeline that, that, <clears throat> that's resulting in people on probation and parole going into prison. That's so, what, what are the things that you would say that the administration needs to do right now in order to improve conditions and also to make sure less people are going to prison and not getting these lengthy terms? Yeah, first of all, I'm excited about the incoming administration. Uh, I uh, am thrilled by some of the decisions and moves that they've made uh, to set up this conversation. Some of my closest colleagues um, are going in. Um, so, I, you know, I text them to, hey, you, you know we're coming. You know, you know we're going to be having a direct conversation about this issue. Uh, one of the things I'd love to see the administration do is incentivize good behavior, good practices at the state level. You know, when we got into mass incarceration, one of the ways was that uh, in the 94 Crime Act, uh, they incentivized states uh, to, to pass truth and sentencing laws. Uh, and so states, a handful of states, followed that lead, uh, received additional resources from the federal government, and, and grew their, their, their prison systems. We can do that in reverse. We, we can incentivize states to say, hey, if, if you're coming up with true alternatives to incarceration, if you're coming up with uh, programs that's going to build out health and support for people uh, on probation and parole, we can incentivize you. We can give you resources to build those things out. That's one of the key things I would love for this administration to do is incentivize states to do the right thing. You know, it's interesting, right? Because, uh, you know, of course, tr Donald Trump might go down in history as the worst president of all time. But in terms of reform, you can't act like he didn't take a first step with the first step back. <laughs> So do you think yeah. President Biden and his administration will take a second step and a third one and a fourth one? Like, how do you think they'll help the cause of reform? Yeah, I, I think I think they, they have a mandate to. Uh, you know, black folks showed up. Y'all mm -hmm. know that. You, you covered it. Black folks showed up in key places like Michigan and Georgia. Uh, and, and black folks want to see the, the criminal justice system change. Right? It's, it's, un, it's clear, it's unapologetic, mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it's right. And, and, and so there, there's certainly a mandate to do the right thing here. I expect Biden's going to do everything he can in his administration to do the right thing. How the politics line up, we'll see. But here's what's important about this conversation, too. You know, we can't wait for Superman. Like, we, we, we can't show up in the polls and then wait and see what the administration is going to do. We mm -hmm. have to engage. We have to, just like we organized during the election, we have to organize like that now to get what we want. That's how democracy works. That's how politics works. And so I would I would message to your folks. It's like, hey, let's, let, let's get together. Let's talk about the things we want to see the administration do. And let's put the appropriate pressure on them to, to, to get them to do it. And with all the new marijuana laws and people who are still in jail because of marijuana, how do we make sure that they get out? Yeah, no, that's that that that's an excellent point. I mean, there there are a number of ways uh, we we can do. I, I I would just first uh, uh, like like to like to see an executive order that that basically uh, you know w w pardons everyone that's that's in on on, on marijuana. Drugs. Yes, yeah. man. You know, that that what makes the most sense. You have on one end people uh, in businesses that's making money. Um, mm -hmm. off of marijuana, which, which, which they should. And we need to make sure that, uh, the, that, that, that there's proper race representation in those businesses. But at the same time, we can't have people serving out time That's for right. what people are now making money on. It just doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm, I'm actually upset with the Biden-Harris administration about that, only because that's something they ran on. Even when it was the Senate race in Georgia, they were saying, if you want weed to be decriminalized, Vote for John Ossoff and Ralph Warnock. Like, that should have been something that they handled literally in the first few days. Decriminalize marijuana, free all of the people that are uh, in jail with nonviolent drug offenses for weed. Yeah. Imagine you're sitting in jail for a marijuana offense and weed has been dec decriminalized and companies are making millions of dollars off of it and you're still in jail. You know, I would have said that was impossible um, before four years ago, before I got to understand the system. Now, I'd say that's a normal day and that's why we all need to work together to fix these laws, go state by state, put pressure on everyone that matters, and you know, get to a better place. You know, unfortunately, um, you know, this is the, the country is not effective. We've got a completely broken criminal justice system. It's not logical, and that's why we got to bring out every resource and get people really working together to fix these problems. It's uh, logic does not prevail until you force it to prevail. 
Now, now you're right, Michael. Now, Michael, um, I, I'm wondering, right? You and uh, Robert, Meek has been the face of of this for a while. Are you bringing on other individuals? Yeah, I'd say Meek. The way I really look at this is Meek was really the inspiration of this. And mm-hmm. you, look, you gotta kind of go back to what really happened. You know, I had no understanding of that this shit really happened. I lived through it with Meek. You know, we talked every day about how when he got out of prison, we had to do something about this. And that is that will always be the inspiration for why we started this. And we'll never kind of forget that. But I think what Meek says all the time, and I agree with this, is this is about getting the everyday Meeks where there's millions of people that are unfairly stuck within the system. Um, I think one of the things that was so exciting to be um, as I went through, you know, I had myself and Laura Arnold um, kind of ran the search process together. And when we met all these different candidates, one of the things I was so excited with Robert, he is built, um, he's built so many different campaigns about taking people that have been adversely affected in a state and using the everyday people to really help shed a light on these issues. So this is what Robert's done in his entire career. And this is why Robert's the perfect person to take uh, reform, you know, kind of for, and that's why we're so excited about. So, Robert, I'd love for you to jump in and say, you know, talk about what you've done already and kind of what a normal, you know, campaign is like in your life, because we're going to do the same thing here with the everyday people affected by this. Absolutely, Michael. Th- thank you for that. Yeah, so, you know, my 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 work history, th- th- this is the only thing I've ever done, like build campaigns uh, to change criminal justice system. I started off as a neighborhood organizer in Hartford, Connecticut, uh, then went to uh, be the first and founding uh, director of the criminal justice program in, at the NAACP. I w- worked with Ben Jealous to build that program out. Um, and then I went to California, as, as I alluded to earlier, uh, to help build out uh, the community or- organizing arm of a new organization, uh, Californians for Safety and Justice. Um, in every iteration, it's exactly what Michael said. It's about bringing everyday people to the table to let their voices be heard about what they want um, out, of, out of the justice system. My most recent iteration um, of that at Alliance for Safety and Justice was to hear from and elevate the voices of victims of crime. You know, historically, people may think victims want to, 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 to throw people in prison and, and, and throw away the key. Uh, what we found is that when you talk to uh, victims in communities hit hard by crime and violence, when you talk to black folks, uh, that's been victimized by crime. They don't want to throw people in prison and throw away the key. They want to stop what happened from happening again. They want real investments in their community. They want treatment instead of incarceration. They want investments in mental health. And what we saw was that there was a missing voice in the criminal justice debate that these folks who've been impacted by crime and violence then have a say and, and at the same time, their name was being used to justify mass incarceration. And so part of our work was to elevate the voices of victims to say, not in my name. Uh, we do not want to see prisons and jails built. We want investments uh, in our communities to stop crime from happening. So now we're uh, at, at the Alliance for Safety and Justice, have over 100,000 members, victims of crime. Uh, we, we weighed in on um, the election. We had a whole campaign called Heal the Vote. Uh, which was bringing these stories to light as to what we want the justice system uh, to say. And so, yeah, I I have a background experience of of bringing people together, elevating their voices, and moving in the direction of of making real real change happen. I am thrilled to have that opportunity to do this at Reform Alliance. You have these titans on the board who all have, have been successful in their own rights, in their own careers, all coming together like Marvel to say, hey, we want to change this issue when regarding how probation and parole treats people. And so I see that as a mandate. Why not Why not organize a million people? Why, why not organize an army of folks that's going to weigh in on this issue? They're going to let their voices be heard. And that's going to change how probation and parole systems operate as the jump off point to ending mass incarceration. So I'm excited to bring that piece in, in, into the work and have and give everyday people a voice in this important conversation. You know, the, the reason I asked about that is because, you know, I think about Michael in Philly and, you know, there's a brother in Philly, man, who 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 did 20 years in prison, you know, who speaks out about the injustices that, that happened in prison. And that's Wallow. I would love to see Wallow down with, with the Reform Alliance in some way, shape or form. Do you, do you, you know Wallow, Michael? I think I've met Wallow. I'm pretty sure I have. 
Um, and I got to tell you something, one of the biggest things that people ask me all the time, and it, it, it really warms my heart, is how can I help? Mm -hmm. And I, during my process with Robert, he kept telling me about how he organizes hundreds of thousands of people to help. So we need, like, you can't win this fight, you know, one person at a time. we got to win this by getting, honestly, millions of people to work together. And I think one of the great things by having a Meek Mill, a Jay-Z, a Robert Kraft as founding members of this is they bring so much more attention to it and get so many more people to want to help. I'll tell you, when the laws changed in California, it was about so many people coming together. And one of the things I hear all the time, it's amazing, is Robert Kraft will call me. He's like, he said, like, man, I don't understand why people care. keep asking me why I care. He's like, now he, he, he like, it's like when he, you know, when his eyes got open, he's like, this is so screwed up. I got to help make a difference. Now like, he'll do anything that he can to help change a law. Wow. Because he becomes so passionate about it. But people are like, wait, why is this, you know, he'll get mad at me saying this, but why is this old white billionaire guy, you know, care about fixing these laws, but he's so passionate about it. And to me, that's the way we win. If we can, you know, it's one thing is to get everyone who's affected to work together. But if we can get the people that aren't affected to care about this issue and work together, that's bigger than anything. I think the one thing when we created the Reform Alliance, it was about bringing a diverse group of people of, you know, as, you know, Robert said, you know, really successful people together to fix this. And, you know, we joke about the Brooklyn Nets, but Clara Sides, one of our founding board members, and she's incredible. And by the way, she, she like me, had no understanding of this issue. And now she's so passionate about yeah. how she can help change laws and what she can do. And the great thing is with our board members, they're always saying like, what else can we do? Who do you want me to call? How can I help? And you know, we got to do that on a massive scale. And so we need your guy and we need millions of people and we need them of all backgrounds because that's the only way we're going to fix this. If not, it's going to be the same shit that's happened you know, for the past 20 years. Meek, I'm telling you, Meek got to holla at Wallow. I got to tell Meek holla at Wallow then. Now, let me just ask one thing. It's a little bit off topic, but I saw that Virginia abolished the death penalty. And I wanted to ask why something like that is important and if you think that can happen across all the states. Robert? Yeah, let me let me, let me jump in here because I've, I've, I've done uh, anti-death penalty work. You know, my heart goes out. Uh, to the advocates on the ground doing that work, that that is a, a thankless and difficult and challenging a job to have. You know, I, I headed up and actually when I first met now Senator Raphael Warnock uh, was in Atlanta, Georgia on the Troy Davis campaign. I was the NAACP representative building out that campaign to try and stop the execution um, of, 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 Troy, of Troy Davis and met some amazing partners along the way. Stacey Abrams was was, was, was part of that. Uh, as I said, Senator Warnock and just a ton of advocates that was working hard. That was actually one of the first major social media criminal justice reform campaigns in this country that went global. It, it, it just went, the entire world was paying attention to, 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 to that effort. Uh, and, and so to, to see states, um, you know, Colorado recently made some, some, some major uh, reforms in that area, uh, a, a, actually moving everyone on death row in, into, into life, life without parole, uh, it's, it's, it's a positive movement. And, and it's come with a lot of hard work uh, uh, on the ground with, with, with people who, who knew folks, uh, got close to people, and then had to lose them um, as a result of the, 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 the death penalty. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that movement. You know, the, the, the film Just Mercy uh, was, I think, is playing a huge part um, in educating people. This is the film, you know, about the life of Brian Stevenson and mm -hmm. his litigation. Um, regarding uh, a, a person on, on death row, I think I think it's waking up a lot of people on on the injustices in the system, and it also it also is why Reform Alliance uh, is really the perfect organization to help move this conversation forward. Uh, you have uh, uh, people that uh, have been successful in their own uh, right now coming together, who have megaphone, uh, <laughs> uh, who have following, who have fans. Uh, and 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 to be able to to to, to leverage uh, their voices and infuse in the culture 
which is what you guys do too, which I really appreciate. Infusing the culture, the need for a shift in the justice system is huge. So we're, we're seeing it and on the death penalty side, and we're seeing it on the criminal justice reform, mass incarceration side. We're seeing it on probation, parole side. That, that we're moving in the right direction. I'll be it, it, it may be slower than a lot of us uh, would, would like, but we, we we are we are we are taking it one step at a time. The, the, the other thing you got to remember that's so important is. Reform Alliance is focused on the biggest problem within the criminal justice system. And that was the eye-opening thing for me and just the way like destiny kind of, you know, happens. You know, Meek went to prison four different times for not committing a crime. And so when we said, hey, we have to do something about this, we didn't know it was about fixing probation. We we're just like, you know, kind of we owe it to fix the criminal justice system. Then we went out and we saw so many great organizations working on things like um, fixing bail or fixing issues with prison or, or addressing the death penalty and issues with that. But no one was really thinking about probation and parole. And that's four and a half billion of the 6.7 million people in the system. So two thirds of the people in the criminal justice system are on probation and parole, but there was nobody focused on it. So one of the things that got me so excited as like an entrepreneur is like, give me a big juicy problem to go after. And this is a big juicy thing that no one was paying attention to. And I think that's why, you know, the great work Van's done, the incredible work that Robert's going to do going forward for us, we can have such a big impact on this country. Word. So if people want to get involved, man, how do they get involved? Robert? So we're going to be building um, a, uh, a, a an infrastructure to get 1 million people to enroll, to be reformers, to work with us in the state. Uh, we're in the process. You know, my, I start March one, even though I've already started. Uh, but we're, <laughs> we're, we're in the process of uh, of building out uh, a new uh, a, 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 a social media uh, a, a platform and 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 digital presence online, which is super exciting. I'm just now learning about it, and the, but that's going to have uh, opportunities for people to link in and connect. Uh, and, and 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 get how you can engage and participate in reform activities at the state level. What's important is that majority of people incarcerated, majority of people probation parole, uh, it's being managed at the state level. And so even though we're we're a national campaign, we're elevating the issue, we're elevating people's voice uh, nationwide it all comes down to what happens in the state. So we need volunteers. We need people to weigh in and organize and participate in activities and changing laws at their state, in their, in, 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 at the state level, in their states. Uh, and, and that's what we're going to be harnessing that energy to do moving forward every form. And, you know, Robert, I know it's about the work, but, you know, when I look at, you know, Robert Kraft and I look at Jay-Z yeah. and I look at Michael Rubin buying $50 million houses in the Hamptons, I have to ask... What is the pay like for the CEO of reform, Robert? Is <laughs> hey, 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 listen, you know, um, this is a generational problem, all right? The issue of probation parole is, is, is an issue that undermines individuals, undermines families, undermines community, undermines the economic uh, net uh, possibilities for, for everyday people. And so we're going to be weighing in and changing that. And we have generational actors like Jay-Z and Meek Mill and Michael Rubin, Laura Arno, um, and others. These are people that have made significant impact in their own space coming together. And we're going to make a generational change. Uh, but I was, I, I was talking about generational wealth and the generational wealth they have and how much of that are they giving to you to be CEO? Yeah, of yeah no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm getting there and I, I, I appreciate it, but I just wanted to... The highlight. Is never shy. He just he, he comes out with the hard charging questions. I mean, <laughs> that. and I'm no, sure. I'm, that, he's I'm like, sure. hey, what's up, Robert? How much you making, man? I know, right? <laughs> I'm sure the biggest payoff is though when you see the effect that it has on families and on people Absolutely. who are. You know, because imagine how much that affects people's families, not even just the person who goes to jail or is on probation. That affects the whole family. So And the whole community. You have entire communities where like 50 percent of the folks are, are, are in the system <laughs> Some, somehow. 50 percent of black men, let me say, mm -hmm. are in the system. What do you think that does to the tax base? What do you think that does to, to, to the household, uh, to the community, to parks, to like activities, sports? Like it undermines all of that. And so we, we need to just get the weight of the system off of everyday people's backs. And, the, and, and that's what that, that's what we're going to that's what hey, hey, Charlotte, man, I will add it to the because the question you ask is actually 
an important question. And the reason is the way we want to build the Reform Alliance is like an entrepreneurial based venture company. Go out and get the best talent. Mm -hmm. That's how you win. One of the problems when you're looking at a lot of, you know, I'm just being blunt, a lot of charitable work just across the world is they have a bunch of people who care deeply about the issue, but they're not beasts. We need beasts to feel like, you know, Robert's a beast, okay? Van was a beast on, on this. Robert's going to build a team. Like, Robert's got an incredible team that, that Van built that he's, you know, going to work with, and he's going to continue to build that team. And I got to tell you something, in my company, in my day job, but it's no different with the Reform Alliance. We will never stop to get the best talent available to win what we want to do. And I'll tell you, it comes back to when we started the Reform Alliance, I, I don't want to say who it was, but I had a really close friend of mine, really successful person, and he said, you know, kind of what's your goal? And I said, you know, what do you think my goal should be? He says, I think you should get, you should have a goal to get 10,000 people off of probation and parole. I thought about it for a minute. I said, we're going to do a million. He said, huh? I said, we want to get a million people out of the system. He said, how'd you come up with that? I said, well, there's four and a half million people on probation and parole. That means there's probably two or three million too many. So a million is a nothing goal. It's only like a half or a third of the people that we should be getting out of the system. So it's an easy goal. He said, well, I think 10,000 is the right number. And the reason I tell you this story is because you have to think big. You have to build big. It's no different than a business, what you guys do. You guys probably all have dreams and you just keep pushing and pushing. So for me, coming up with a goal of getting a million people out of the system, which we just kind of picked. And by the way, we've got hundreds of thousands of people already coming out of probation and parole based on what we've done in California, Michigan, the other states. So we're tracking toward our goal of getting a million people out of the system. It's the same thing when you build an organization. We wanted to get Robert to be our next CEO. We want Robert to have any of the tools he needs to have the most successful organization so that we win what we want to do. Because if not, how we actually accomplish this really bold goal. No, y'all, y'all have um y'all have really, really, really elevated the conversation about prison reform with the Reform Alliance. And it's it, it is very inspiring. I've I've you know, I've had conversations with Dads about this. Just I I want to build something like this for mental health as well, just because what y'all have done with the Reform Alliance, it's created this big, large conversation that transcends hip hop, pop culture, and just, you know, everyday society. And I think that's dope. That's how you get things done. Yeah, hey. that, that, I love hearing that. That makes me so happy because to me, you know, we got to find inspiration to inspire ourselves in the same way that me inspired, you know, all of us collectively to start the Reform Alliance. You know, if, if in any small way we help you to go out and do something great, that's incredible. I can tell you, it's funny. Mental health is an issue that I never understood. And, you know, I like I was always just kind of, you know, by the way, my mom was a psychiatrist. Wow. I, I grew up in an environment where it was just like kind of you set your mind to something and, you know, you had blinders on. And then I realized, like, in the last five or ten years, wow, this is a much bigger issue than I understood. And, you know, it's somebody. And, and by the way, you know, think about people that, that are stuck within. The, like, by the way, the people that I think have so many, you know, been so adversely affected by mental health is when you grow up in an environment, a ruthless environment, how are you not going to have, you know, significant mental health That's issues right. prevalent in your community? So somebody like you that puts this on the shoulders can make a huge difference. And it's about, by the way, it's about thinking differently, just being unrelenting. And that's like, that's what makes, you know, I know what we do in business, what I, you know, what we're doing with the reform list, we just don't quit. It's like, you just, you're saying, I got this big goal. I'm going to go after it. I'm not going to fucking quit till I accomplish it. And it's the same thing if you do that. So, uh, you know, I'd love to help you in any way possible because it is a really big issue that I understand better now than I did in the past, still not well enough, but you know, you can make a huge difference. And you know what, that's, that would be more impactful than anything else you do. Cause I can tell you, um, you know, for me, I've had a fair amount of success in business and I love it and I'm completely driven by it, but I'm so excited about like, I'm, you know, I'm more excited to be talking about Reform Alliance than I am about anything else because it's the millions of people's lives that we can affect. And that's, you know, when I'm not here one day, you know, that'll be probably, you know, the thing that I'll be, you know, most proud about looking up. So, yeah. And I mean, and it goes hand in hand with what y'all doing, because I mean, if you go to prison for 10, 15 years, you think you're not going to come home and, and have to adjust? You don't think you're dealing with no mental health issues? Hey, sure. I think you Go ahead, Robert. Oh, yeah. No, I just want to jump in, Charles, man, man. It's so good to hear you say this. And it is directly connected to what we're going to do at Reform Alliance. We're going to shrink the system. That, Like, that's what we're going to do. We're going to shrink the system. It's an $80 billion budget right now for prisons and jails and, 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 and to keep people in the carceral state. 
we're, we're, we're going to shrink that. We're going to take the money out of that and invest it in real programs and opportunities for people at the local level. And that's mental health. That's mental health, that, that's substance abuse treatment. Those are things that allow us to get at the, what's the root cause of some of these crimes? We're only putting a Band-Aid on, on, on issues and it's not helping anyone. And so as we are successful moving those resources to mental health program, it'll be great to have a partner like you, man, that's elevating the issue, talking about it state by state and ensuring that these programs get, get, get off the ground so they can help everyday people. Let's do so I don't, I don't, I don't want to butcher this number, but I believe, and Robert, keep me honest here, in California, once we implemented the one-year cap on misdemeanors and two-year cap on felony probation, I think they projected they're going to have a $2 billion savings over the next five years. And the number one thing they talk about is investing that in mental illness and mental health. Now, how, like, how beautiful is that? We have a screwed up system that we're fixing. We're then taking cost savings and investing in an area that needs, you know, incredible investment. So to me, that's like actually, you know, you got to give it to Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. I mean, this guy has had a lot of courage and he's taken, by the way, he's taken a lot of shit for, you know, being out there and doing the right thing. And, you know, he's done a lot for criminal justice reform. And I got to tell you, you know, I only met him in, in, in the last year really during this process, but he's a guy who's put this stuff on his shoulders and said, I'm going to do the right thing. And then I'm going to take the savings and invest in other areas with a lot of backlash, a lot of people fighting against him. But he's a guy who, uh, you know, he's had courage to, to, to uh, you know, make big, big changes and really set a standard, a new standard for other states to look at and say, this is the way we should operate. If we could have the laws in California in every state, in the country, we'd be a wrap on probation and parole law changes. There'd still be so much more work to do, but we'd have the laws right, and uh, we'd have the framework right to go do so much other work as a, you know, as an out, out, you know, output of, of, of getting those changes made. That's right. Well, give them the website, man. Robert? Robert. Reform Alliance. Yep. <laughs> ReformAlliance.com. Michael yeah. Rubin, Robert Rooks, thank y'all. Appreciate everything y'all are doing, my brothers. I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much.